I woke up suddenly in the night as I heard some of the soldiers running around on the skyways above me. I stretched as much as I could within the bars of my small cage and winced as the bruises on my wings flared up in pain as they caressed the cold bars of my prison. I muttered a curse under my beak as I didn't want to cause trouble for the townsfolk sleeping below me. I stood up in my cage, barely able to stand upright on the hard steel floor of it. I grabbed the bars and looked down to the floor fifteen meters below me. In the faint light I could see the four barred sections that segregated my people. One for children, one for males, one for females, and the last one for military personnel. All in all, fifteen hundred prisoners. The cages were large, spanning almost the entire hexagon warehouse, not counting the walk paths between them. I was horrified when I saw the machines that made these cages be brought to our town in large, specially designed ships. Huge machines that looked like eight-sided dice hovering barely above the ground, with two exhaust pipes sticking out the top and holes on each side. They ate metal and other materials and remade them into metal cages in various sizes and with different purposes that could be assembled perfectly. Machines whose sole purpose is to churn out cages and other devices of cruelty, and at a staggering rate, the cages that hold us now were built a mere two days after the town was lost. The cage ceilings over my kin were made from thick bars with tiny barbed spikes that stuck to their feathers and skin that ultimately made them lose the feathers. Many were already covered in bald spots, from scratching at barbs that just dug even deeper. Iron walkways over the cages were placed so our captors could throw food down to us. I watched in anger and disgust as the barely edible gruel they fed us was just tossed down between the bars in waterproof sacks, forcing us to eat like animals. I was placed in the middle of the warehouse next to a skywalk. The Zirans thought it fitting that I would be looking down over my people as some sort of a joke. The nobles often came to mock me, tossing leftover food at me like I was a common pet. And the worst of them all was that young noble, Sarnak, the son of the second in command. He made it his mission to break my spirit. Every so often in the beginning he came to me, sneering, calling my people weak. I didn't mind, I just ignored him. He tried to starve me, dangling food in front of me just out of reach. I ignored it as best I could anyway. And eventually the meager meals given to me came again. Apparently the high chief wants me alive and relatively fit for some reason. Then that young noble did something despicable. He brought to my cage children too young to fly, dropping them from the walkway down to the floor below. It was horrifying. How could such a monster exist? The Zirin soldiers just laughed as the helpless children tried their best to slow the fall, breaking their legs or their wings by the time they hit the ground before being tossed, mercilessly back into their cages and left wailing in agony. I begged him to stop after he threw the first two children, but he just looked at me, amused that he was finally getting the desired reaction. With tears streaming down my face I watched, helplessly, as he dropped child after child, then two more. I pleaded with him to stop, asking what he wanted. I want you to grovel and admit how weak and pathetic your species is, how futile your pockets of resistance are, and that we, the Zirin, are superior in every way. He snarled arrogantly. If that was all I had to do to save the children, then I would do it a hundred times over. I went on my knees and spoke out all his demands. Humph, how boring. You're far too easy to break. But... I suppose that is to be expected by lesser species, so brittle, so weak, he said mockingly. I didn't care at the time as long as he didn't hurt the children anymore. I do feel pride in a sense that my cousin Zelios is still fighting back. I overheard that arrogant noble complaining about him, but I don't have any hope that he'll arrive to rescue us before their slave ships arrive. I watched in confusion as more Zirin soldiers began running around. The townsfolk below me began to wake up as well frightened and curious as to what was happening. I dreaded for a brief moment that the Zirin haulers were here, ready to take us beyond our borders, to be sold and traded on the slave markets. But that thought quickly diminished as I saw the nervous faces of the soldiers in the low light, as if something unexpected had happened. More noise came from outside the main door. It opened and roughly fifty soldiers alongside a lesser noble shuffled at a fast pace into the building walking up to the scaffolding and walkways, focusing their rifles on every window and door in the facility. What is happening? I pondered aloud to no one. 
the red and purple-hued noble barked orders at the seventy soldiers, who began taking positions in groups of four, five at the entrances of the warehouse. The noble looked down at the screen on his communication device and then jumped in surprise as the speakers in the building churned to life as an eerie melody started playing. Every Zirin and every Illyrian that was awake turned toward the speakers as children's voices started speaking in Zirin. Thanks to the translation device fastened to my ear, I could understand it, but even without understanding, it was outright eerie. Something about shadows, swaying, and Terrans. It was some sort of a rhyme as I could not understand it perfectly. Then the voices in the speakers started to laugh, a very disturbing, chilly laugh. Then they stopped suddenly, and the child's voice spoke. We are already here. Run, little lizards. Run. I tried to wrap my head around what was taking place, but right when I thought I understood the words correctly, all hell broke loose. Explosions and laser shots sounded from outside the warehouse. The Zirin soldiers looked nervous as if they were only there because they didn't have a choice. The noble stood firm, close to the center of the building, not far from my cage. Hold your positions, he commanded. We will not lose our precious spoils. Those are our orders. He continued, raising his glowing sword into the air and readying his pistol in the other hand. Outside of the main doors could be heard muffled shouts and gunfire. Then suddenly, it was all silent. Deafeningly so. For ten long minutes, nothing but silence, periodically broken by a distant shout or stray laser fire. The light suddenly started to flicker, then the sound of breaking glass was heard from the ceiling as what looked like a few cylinders were dropping down from the openings of the windows there. As soon as they broke through the glass, the cylinders exploded and big clouds of dark smoke instantly covered the ceiling. The clouds merged and slowly began to descend towards the floor. The soldiers on the top skywalks ten meters above me were the first to be engulfed in the smoke, and once inside the smoke, the screams began. Laser fire could be seen as red streaks of light within the clouds as the bodies of the first victims began to drop down to the levels below. Their eyes wide as pools of blood started to drain from their bodies. Fire! shouted the noble, gnashing his teeth trying desperately with focused eyes to spot any movement within the smoke cloud. The soldiers unleashed a barrage of laser fire into the smoke above. Holes formed where the shots went through but were quickly covered up again as the cloud crept ever so slowly down, almost mocking their futile attempt to stop it. It crept down along the walls of the building until it reached the floor, and all the Zirin were now backed up to each other in the center skywalks, roughly fifty now left. The dark plumes of smoke danced slowly in front of them from all directions. The commander ordered a ceasefire and looked nervously at the still smoke cloud around them. Suddenly out of the smoke, a silver dart of some sort connected to black chains shot down from above, piercing a Zirin soldier in the leg. It roared in pain as the dart opened and four backward-facing hooks latched onto it. With a quick yelp, the soldier was hoisted up into the cloud. Dozens of other darts shot from all around them, connecting every time and pulling the screaming Zirin to their doom. They tried to resist, but one by one they were plucked into a cloud of smoke, soldier after soldier, until only the commander was left. He stood there in front of me, shooting wildly in all directions, yelling curses as panic seeped ever deeper into his eyes. A clicking sound could be heard as he finished his ammunition. Then, from the clouds, several pairs of blue eyes appeared and a soldier clad in pitch-black armor walked out of the smoke, his blue eyes fixed on the enemy in front. The lesser noble cursed and yelled as he swung his sword around. The black-armored soldier walked at a steady pace towards him as two vibrating blades slid out from his forearms, humming slightly. The noble prepared himself and lunged at the shadowy soldier, slicing with his sword back and forth, but the soldier simply dodged and blocked nonchalantly as if he was a tutor teaching a child his gaze never leaving the noble. The soldier eventually stabbed through the sword hand of the Zirin, then planted his foot firmly against its chest, kicking him backward. The noble landed on his back as he grasped at the wound on his forearm. Then another chain dart shot down and dug through his right leg. He winced in pain, then watched as the hooks unfolded and dug into his skin. No, 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 he yelled, his scream cutting off as he was engulfed into the cloud. I turned my head. The soldier was now standing in front of me, 
looking me up and down as if to confirm something. Then his visor slid open and I saw the black eyes of an ashen-skinned Terran looking at me, his teeth bared in a smile under a thick, finely trimmed red mustache. He was definitely a Terran. I had watched hundreds of videos and movies about the Terrans. He was definitely one, but not a normal one. Governor Voronor, I presume? He asked haughtily. Yes, yes, that is me, I replied timidly as my mind was rushing through several things at the same time. Splendid. My name is Harold. I am captain of the 5th Company of Raven Division. I am here on the behest of Captain Gray, the commander of this operation. My task is to escort you to him to be briefed on the situation at hand. He continued cheerfully, as if he weren't fighting an enemy hell-bent on killing him just moments ago. What about my people here and in the other prisons? I plead. They will be rescued momentarily. The segregated cages make it easier as we can ask the military persons imprisoned here to help with the evacuation. Our medics will also make a triage in front of the warehouses to deal with any wounded Illyrians. The captain answered with a smile. I feel better knowing that. Could you help me out of here then, captain? I asked, relief flowing over me now. He smashed his knuckles together with an evil grin. Not a problem, governor. He grinned as he jumped up over the rail, grabbed my cage with one arm, and swung his other hand in a fist toward the lock on my cage. A loud clang was heard as a dented fist mark was left on the lock. Then he pulled hard and flung the door wide open. After you, governor, he said with a bow and a smirk. I jumped over to the railing, grabbing it with my feet. I flexed my wings for the first time in what felt like ages and took in a long breath. All right, where are we heading? I mused, feeling alive again. We are going to your office. I suspect Captain Gray has finished rounding up the nobles. He answered as he jumped down to the floor, landing gracefully and silently. What a wondrous piece of armor, I thought to myself as I glided down to him. We went to the army personnel cage first as I told my townsmen about the Terrans, that they were our allies and were here to help. Hearing those words from me helped calm the people down as they were quite shaken. Once that was in order, I walked with Captain Harold towards the exit. Once out, I was ambushed with a grim scene, the aftermath of a battle. No, a slaughter. Zirin corpses were lying around the hovered above the town as they put out fires with some sort of smoke bombs not too dissimilar to what I witnessed earlier, and an eerie silence somehow loomed over the town. We are currently cleaning up the aftermath of the battle. We should be finished before 5 a.m., I think the captain said whilst twirling the end of his upper lip hair. Would you like me to call a transport for us? He continued. No, I wish to stretch my wings. I can fly there. I know the town like the back of my talons, I answered. Well, well, how about a race then? He asked with a mischievous grin. Oh, I may be a bit old, but I am still fast. Think you could keep up to me? I replied in a boisterous tone. Oh, I believe I can he answered as he bolted down the pathway toward my house. I was stunned for a moment before I took to the air. I flapped my wings hard to gain speed as I closed the distance on him. He leapt over a one-story building like it was nothing, cutting through the winding pathways and gardens with an unnatural grace. I was probably going forty-five kilometers an hour, but he was still faster than me on the straight roads. I felt the fresh air as the wind glided over my feathers. The smell of the trees was such a sweet thing to have again. Before I knew it, we were at my manor. Harold stood there triumphantly as he leaned against a pillar, not even showing a hint of being tired. Guess I win, he said smugly. You cheated, I joked, trying to hide my winded gasps. I don't see any evidence that I did, he winked. He opened the door as we went into my manor. We walked up the stairs to my private office. In front of it stood two shadow soldiers standing guard. They saluted as they saw Captain Harold and opened the doors. I walked inside and saw two Terrans sitting at the circular table in the middle of the room with their helmets off talking to a hologram screen on the table. One had light gray hair almost white, neatly cut short. He had clean, soft skin and carried himself neatly like a proper soldier. The other had no hair on his head but his face had a thick, kempt, black beard. He had a scar running across his face from his left ear up and over his head back to his neck, and carried the air of a wild hunter, ready to strike at any time. The gray-haired man looked at me with a smile. Welcome home, Governor. Glad to see you are in one piece. I am Captain Gray and this is Captain Hayes. 
I believe you have already met your rescuer, Captain Harold. We wanted to ask you about a few things considering logistics and the matter of the townsfolk before you get a well-deserved rest, he said in a soft tone. That should not be a problem, I answered with a courteous bow. I am overjoyed to hear that our allies have joined us and I am relieved that this whole ordeal is almost over. I finished, clicking my beak slightly in amusement. I am afraid it's not over yet. We still need to finish liberating your planet and kick the Zirin back to their galactic borders, he said with a stern look as he gestured to me to take a seat. We went over logistical things like temporary housing and food supplies, and what to expect when their main armada comes. Time flew by as I conversed with them, and before I knew it, almost two hours had passed. I bid them good night as we would continue in the morning when my cousin arrived. I headed to my bedroom, washed myself, and simply crashed on top of my bed, letting the sheer exhaustion wash over me as I drifted off into a deep slumber.